Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing. I'm a Cooperative Extension agent in forestry serving the Northern District. And today we're at McCormick Farm, which is also known as the Shenandoah Valley Ag and Research Extension Center. We're going to be taking a look at ash trees and a particular plight that ash trees have been facing throughout all of Virginia the past few years. And that is the emerald ash borer, a non-native invasive insect that attacks things in the olive family. Ash is one of the few species we have in this part of the world that actually belongs to the Oleaceae family. And Fraxinus is the genus, and we'll mostly be looking at white ash today, which is Fraxinus americana. And so I'm thankful for the Virginia Department of Forestry support today, as well as an intern from Virginia Tech Urban Forestry Program. And let's go to the woods. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin DeWitt. I'm the Forest Health Specialist with the Virginia Department of Forestry. Today we are out at the beautiful McCormick Farm, which is kind of on the county line between Rock Ridge and Augusta County here in Virginia. Um, and what we're going to be doing today are treating some of these beautiful ash trees along a popular hiking trail here at the farm. Um, we're protecting them against the emerald ash borer, which is an invasive insect that has been devastating our native ash species in North America. Um, and we're going to kind of cover two main methods of um, trunk injections today. This is the Q-Connect system that I have going right now. Um, and then we're also going to be later demoing the Quick Jet Air system, um, which looks more like a gun that forces the chemical in. Both of these systems are unfortunately not available for uh, private landowners. They require a certified pesticide applicator's license to utilize and they are a bit pricey. So this would be what would happen or what you would see if you called an arborist out to treat your tree at your house. Um, for applications or ways to protect your ash tree as a landowner, um, you can do a soil drench, which is good for one year. These methods that we're gonna be showing today are using a chemical that's good for two to three years. Um, but the soil drench is a much cheaper and cost-effective method for the individual landowner. And it's an active ingredient, imidacloprid. Um, so you do have to watch out if you're applying it around any pollinators or any flowering plants or any, by any bodies of water but it is still an option that you can do yourself as a landowner. Hello, my name is Molly O'Liddy with the Virginia Department of Forestry, and today we're at McCormick Farm and we're treating ash trees. So the first step in treating ash trees for emerald ash borer is to measure the circumference or the diameter of the tree. The diameter of the tree is 22. So now we'll use the measurement of the diameter of the tree, which is 22, to determine how much material and how many injection sites to utilize to treat this tree for emerald ash borer. Um, so now that we've taken the diameter of the tree and calculated how many injection sites and the amount of insecticide that we're going to be applying to this tree, the next step is to start drilling into the tree and introducing the T's, which are the connectors to the Q-Connect system. Um, and so these are the T's. This is what's going to go into the tree and deliver the chemical. Um, it's similar to an IV system that you would get if you were sick in the hospital. Um, it goes directly into the tissue of the tree, delivers the chemical, it utilizes the tree's uptake of water from its root systems to move the chemical all the way up through its tissue and get throughout into the, the very top of the tree. Um, so what we're gonna do now is make a small drill injection site. Um, put the T in and we'll do this for all 10 of the injection sites around the T. And then we'll add the chemical, pressurize the system um, using a bike pump. And then um, we'll get the chemical going in the tree and take it from there. So Molly's gonna be making a drill entrance um, and then putting the T in. She's only gonna go about half an inch in. You don't wanna go too far. And you can see on her drill bit, they have these white, what we call curly cues. Um, and that's a good indicator that we've hit that nice vascular tissue of the tree. Um, you don't wanna go in too far because you wanna make sure you're getting the tissue that's actually gonna be translocating materials up into the tissue. And then the emerald ash borer larvae, which is the damaging life stage of this pest, is under the bark feeding on that tissue. Um, and it'll come in contact with the insecticide, eat it, and then die within the tree, therefore stopping the feeding. Um, an application of this that we're doing today will protect the tree for 
two to maybe three years um, as the tree is continually um, has some residual efficacy of the insecticide within its tissue. So um, this isn't a one-time cure-all, unfortunately, um, but two to three years is better protection than doing nothing at all. And the, the active ingredient that we're using is the emmectin benzoate, and um, that is considered the best kind of treatment chemical out there for emerald ash borer. This is the, the chemical that we'll be putting in the tree. This is emmectin benzoate. Um, I'm pumping the chemical up on the back of this little tube right here. They have it already pre-measured for the amount of milliliters that are going in. So based on the label and what we've calculated with our cheat sheet, I'm going to be putting 135 mils into this tree. Um, you just have to pump it up, squeeze it. Alright, and then what we do now is Can you hand me that? Yeah. What we do now is we're gonna put the chemical into the reservoir system. So this bottle is the reservoir system. It connects directly to the Q Connect tree injection system. And so we're going to very carefully unscrew it and then carefully pour the chemical in. Our trusty bike pump and we're going to apply it to the reservoir put it on the reservoir and then we're just gonna add a little bit of pressure about 30 psi and you can see it's clearing through the lines and it's gonna go to each T in a second so we're at 30 psi and now the next step so we don't want to introduce any air into the system so what we're gonna do is burp the lines and we're going to make sure that we clear the air but then stop when the chemical gets to the T um, so that we don't hurt the tree anymore by introducing a bunch of forced air into it and um, causing an embolism or anything. You just very slowly open it. <laughs> Sometimes you get a little dribble. <laughs> and you do this for each of the T's around the tree. still have 30 psi of pressure on the bike pump. Everything has been burped. So now Molly and I are going to go around and open up all the teas so that the tree can start taking up the chemical and getting treated. <laughs> Ready, Molly? Yep. Kind of do a quick walk through, make sure you don't have any leaks. Everything's flowing okay. Now you wait. So, anytime you're using a herbicide or in this case an insecticide, the label is the law. So, the first thing that the label talks about is you don't want any of your skin exposed. So gloves, long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes. You want eye protection in case the chemical um, were to splash back into your eyes. So to add on to the um, glove requirement, you want to be careful in what type of glove that you select to use. You do not want to use leather gloves or any kind of just cloth working gloves because that will expose you to the chemical. Hi, I'm Lori Chamberlain, Forest Health Manager at the Virginia Department of Forestry. This is an ash tree and it's infested with the emerald ash borer, an invasive insect that attacks and kills ash trees in North America. So today we are treating the ash trees to try to protect them from the ash borer and save them. 
And the method that we're using is an injection, a trunk injection, and we're using an ArborJet quick jet air system. So we're actually going to be drilling into the tree, placing plugs, these little plugs, into the trunk of the tree. And then we will use this system to actually inject chemical into the plugs into the tree. And if all goes well, this will protect this tree for two to three years. <laughs> So in order to determine how much chemical to put in the tree, you need to read the label. So we read the label of the insecticide that we're using, and then we measured the diameter of the tree. I think we're doing 10 to 12 injection sites, 10 to 15 mils each. So that was 15 milliliters into this one injection site. Hello, I'm Sydney Chambers. Uh, I am a senior forestry student at Virginia Tech. This year I'm working under Dr. Eric Wiseman in urban forestry. Um, I'll be an intern for him this summer. And today I want to talk to you about ash trees, which I'm standing next to one right now. Um, just to start, it is easy to confuse your ash tree with other trees. If we take a look down here, all three of these species are compound leaves. Uh, and for starters, you wanna be sure that you are looking at the entire leaf and not just the leaflet. So right here, we're looking at a black walnut. As you can see, the leaflets, or the leaves here are alternating, which is different than the ash tree right here, which will all be opposite. Another distinguishing factor is we're gonna see smooth edges on these ash leaves. And then back on the walnut, we're gonna see serrated edges. And then looking here for another tree that's easy to confuse with the ash is the tree of heaven. And just like the walnut, this is alternate. And you're going to see smooth edges just like you are going to be seeing on the ash tree. So you're going to want to distinguish that alternate opposite when you're distinguishing your tree. And to sum up the differences you're going to see between other compound leaves that are not your ash tree, you're going to want to look for this opposite action going on here with your leaves. Right here you're looking at the ash bark. Uh, the genus of this species is Fraxinus and I like to use that as a way to remember what the bark looks like because it's breaking off into triangular fractions in the tree. Um, so look for that and you'll probably have an ash. I'm Charlie Huppock and I'm a volunteer forester at the uh, Cyrus McCormick farm. An opportunity arose here to start an interpretive trail. The Headwaters Soil and Water Conservation District decided that the uh, farm here, the uh, Cyrus McCormick farm, and its ability to be a research for cattle and sheep and so forth, also had an op opportunity for interpretation of the, uh, the vegetation here. Well, we saw that there was a, a major stream coming into, fed the, the mill pond. And the mill pond, of course, made the uh, mill go. And so it was a wonderful opportunity for the trees along that to be put into a an interpretive trail. So the Soil and Water D District uh, asked me if I would put in a uh, trail here, find out what happened here in the years gone by during the Cyrus McCormick time when uh, a lot of the uh, land was treated pretty poorly and a lot of erosion and cattle were allowed to go in the stream. We found that uh, a lot of these trees in here are really old. The oak go back 300 years or about the time when Williamsburg was founded. Well, ash trees made up a major part of this, uh, the habitat here for the variety of trees, particularly along the, uh, the stream and the lowland right uh, next to the pond and so forth. So they're a, a more of a water loving uh, tree where the oak trees are more up, a little bit more higher on the, uh, on the upland and uh, ability to take more drier slope. So the ash trees are here and, uh, and some of them are very uh, magnificent.